Good morning, Britain. A new type of radiotherapy could help tens of thousands of breast cancer patients. Instead of weeks of treatment, those who have the disease would need just one dose, and it could be given in 20 minutes. Lucy van den Brule has more. When Marcel Bernstein was diagnosed with breast cancer two years ago, she was only too pleased to take part in a medical trial to treat it. I had my surgery, I spent the night in hospital, I got up next day and I walked away. It is gentler, it is more humane, it is kinder. Most women who don't need a full mastectomy have localised surgery to remove the tumour. Recovery can take weeks and they then face daily radiotherapy sessions. The new technique involves giving just one dose of radiotherapy at the same time as surgery. It saves patients repeated hospital visits and saves the NHS money. For the taxpayer, it will cost less money just because it is, it is shorter time. But it is as effective. It can save several millions in the UK. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence says around 36,000 patients in England each year could benefit from the revolutionary treatment. And it could be available on the NHS within weeks. Lucy van den Brul, Good Morning Britain. Meanwhile, not enough. Well, let's stay with health news for you this morning because thousands of women with breast cancer could be treated with a single 30-minute dose of radiotherapy instead of having to make multiple trips to the hospital for treatment. Let's go to central London and talk to Professor Jayant Wajja, who's been involved in the clinical trials of this particular treatment. Good morning to you. Look, how effective is a single dose of radiotherapy at the time of surgery compared to the, the current methods being used? Well, in our large clinical trial involving over 3,500 patients, in, uh, which were treated in 33 centres in 11 countries, we found that when you give it at the time of lumpectomy, intraoperative radiotherapy appears to be as effective as whole breast radiotherapy. The difference between the two treatments for breast cancer outcomes was not statistically different. What we found is also that the number of patients who died from other causes was significantly lower uh, by a small number uh, when you give uh, treatment during surgery. Uh, are there any concerns or any disadvantages with, with this sort of treatment? Well, there don't seem to be. Uh, we had initially uh, were concerned that perhaps there might be problems in wound healing, but we didn't find that. So we find that the patients um, recover very quickly. Many times they go home the same day. And um, it is the, the woman, for, for a pre uh, woman with breast cancer, the most important benefit is that her local treatment is completed when she has her cancer removed during surgery with a lumpectomy, targeted intraoperative radiotherapy is given during surgery, and that is enough as local treatment. That's what we've found in 80% of such women. I mean, is there going to be a benefit to the patient in this, in quality of life, if you like, in the fact that they're not having to go for radiotherapy and with that concern that that carries for, for weeks after a lumpectomy? Indeed, you said it very well. Uh, the patients normally, after a lumpectomy, have to go for radiotherapy every day, from Monday to Friday, for between three to six weeks. And that uh, is avoided by giving this uh, single dose in the operation theatre because it is targeted to the correct tissues to the fresh tumour bed where the chances of cancer coming back is present and you give the radiation during surgery in front of the surgeon's eyes to the correct tissues at the correct time. So it is the accuracy and immediacy of the treatment that appears to be very important. Does there have to be more, more trials on this before it can be, um, com you know, you can, can be com completely sure it is going to be as effective at least as the current system? Well, we have had this... In olden days, we used to have small trials, so we needed to do multiple trials, and they used to involve 200 or 300 patients. Now, this trial was a very large trial, 3,451 patients, and we started this back in 1998, and the first patient in the trial was recruited in 2000. So it is now going on for 14 to 15 years. So we have had a large enough um, cohort of patients treated in clinical trials to give us a very reliable and robust answer to say that it is very unlikely that this is going to be less effective in terms of breast cancer control and it appears to have less toxicity. So I think we now have enough data to reliably uh, start using this in clinical, uh, normal clinical settings and that is probably why uh, NICE has given us, given this uh, provisional draft guidance to go ahead with it. Uh, it's certainly very encouraging news. Professor, appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.
Karen Adams. We, we've got to reflect on that, that actually, haven't we? That is absolutely amazing, I have to say, because I, uh, I know a lot of women, I, I don't know if you do, but certainly in sort of for, uh, getting younger and younger, actually, mm. having to go for breast cancer treatment. Mm. This is astonishing, and you could not you could see the joy on his yeah, face. Yeah. Oh, it is, it's amazing. It's incredible. I, I've had a friend that's just gone through breast cancer and, and had reconstructive surgery, and, and this would just, it, it, it's, it's so amazing. The idea that you can have that treatment at the point of surgery and then and then be clear or, or not have to go every day because it's yeah. the stress actually yes, it's the emotional stress yeah. and the stress on the family of having to go for that kind of chemo i think it's extraordinary yeah brilliant well, let's look through the papers this morning i want to start if we can um on 45 patients with early stage breast cancer could be offered what's been described as a more convenient type of radiotherapy on the nhs if draft guidelines go ahead. Experts say that the new treatment could be carried out during surgery, which would remove the need for weeks of radiotherapy. Professor Giant Widea is on the line now for us now, has been involved in the clinical trials and is in our London studio for us this morning. Thank you very much, Professor, for your time this morning. I wonder if you could just explain in, in layman's terms exactly what this treatment will do and how it works in practice. Right, yes, we have been involved in this treatment. We developed it 14 years ago in UCL with Professor Michael Baum and Professor Jeffrey Tobias and myself. Um, the treatment involves, uh, is done during lumpectomy, that is the surgical removal of the lump in the breast, which is the breast cancer. And while immediately after lumpectomy, a radiotherapy probe is inserted into the breast and radiation is given from within the breast to the tissues immediately surrounding what was the tumor. And these are the tissues where the risk of recurrence is the highest, and that gets the best treatment at the right time, at the right place. And it is the immediacy and the accuracy of the treatment that probably makes it efficient. And what we did was we treated uh, 3,500 patients in a randomized trial in which half the patient got this treatment and half the patient got the standard treatment. And what we found is that when you give it at the time of lumpectomy, the effectiveness is similar. The difference between the two treatments was not statistically significant. So therefore, in terms of ca breast cancer control, we found that it is as effective. And in terms of other causes of uh, other the deaths from other causes, there were fewer deaths in, uh, with target treatment, which, are, which is targeted intraoperative radiotherapy. That's what we call the procedure. So for so a woman with breast uh, cancer... Uh, yeah. Yes, I was just going to ask, it's in the trial stages at the moment, you've got the results of the trial, so how far away uh, from being used routinely for, for well, most has, people? It has been used in over 8,000 women around the world. So now we have the results of this trial, which has been going on for 12 years. And they were published in February. And we now know that it works. So therefore, it is now suitable to be used for suit, uh, uh, patients, selected patients with um, breast cancer. So we think now we have uh, good enough results for it to be rolled out into clinical practice. And this is reflected in the draft NICE guidelines. So in a so practical like sense, uh, those people who, who are suffering at the moment, they will what, have to have a conversation with their specialists, with their GPs uh, about the treatment? Is it something they can request or look at uh, and just talk through uh, yeah, with the, the uh, medical professionals who are looking after them? Yes, indeed. They can start requesting this now. Uh, it will take some time for it to be rolled, rolled out in the NHS for the, uh, each center to be equipped with this uh, machine. Um, uh, technology, but it shouldn't take too long. Germany already has 60 centers with the machine. Around the world, there are 200 centers with the machine. We have about nine in the UK, but once these guidelines become finalized, it will be very quick for NHS to adopt this because clinicians can clearly see that it is what is good for the patients. So it will not be long before uh, it should be available to, uh, to patients, I hope. Yes. Professor Wadi, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you. 12 minutes to 8, let's find out from Carol what's happening. Patients with early stage breast cancer could be offered a new type of radiotherapy in a single dose rather than as a course of treatments. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence is expected to recommend the new approach. It's thought up to 36,000 people could benefit from the therapy, which would also save the NHS money. Well, with me now is uh, Jan Vaidya, who is the Professor of Surgery and Oncology at University College in London. Uh, you, uh, did you invent this? Well, with, along with Professor Michael Baum and uh, Professor Jeffrey Tobias, yes, three of us uh, did this in 1998. The first case was done almost 
14 years ago to the date, yeah. So just explain what, what it is that, that this thing does. Okay, what we, we have is a uh, machine which is about that size. It generates x-rays, and these x-rays are accelerated through a thin tube which is at the center of a spherical applicator. Now this spherical applicator is of different sizes depending on the size of the tumor bed, size of the tumor itself. So after I have excised the tumor in the breast, you in, put in this spherical applicator inside where the tumor was and keep it in place meticulously to make sure it's in the right place. So when you switch on the machine, it emits x-rays. These target the tissues which are at the highest risk of local recurrence. So, uh, so this is all during, during the surgery, the and of yes. course this means that for, for the patient, weeks of repeat radiotherapy, the traditional yes. treatment through the skin, that's not necessary. No. So this is from given within the breast, and we tested in 3,500 patients whether this is equal to standard treatment, and we found that yes, it does. Uh, the difference is not statistically significant in terms of breast cancer control, and surprisingly we found that the number of deaths from other causes are fewer. So you say you're thing. surprised. I mean, th th this is remarkable, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. It is a good news. Yeah, well, it is rather fabulous to be talking about good news, isn't it? Yes. it? In terms of the the women that benefit from this, will this be true for all breast cancer patients? No, they should be selected patients. They should be patients 45 years of older, or tumor size about three and a half cent up to three and a half centimeters, and good prognosis cancers, ERPR positive, um, and but. It is that does cover a large proportion of patients who are having lumpectomy. In fact, for other patients, we are now started the target B trial, which is for higher risk patients, where we believe that giving this at the right time at the right place, in addition to the whole breast, would improve outcomes from breast cancer. Now, this the outcomes from cancer are the same, so but it's a bit uh, greatly convenient and uh, less stressful for the patient. With the other treatment, we expect it to improve outcomes, which is the trial is ongoing. This trial is completed. We can roll it out to those selected patients now. Is there any downside to this? Well, <laughs> there doesn't seem to be. We need to get the equipment in the hospital. It is now, there are 200 centers around the world who have it. We should soon, soon have it now that uh, we have got this green signal, as it's in draft at present. But Money is always at the center of many discussions within the NHS and yeah. at hospitals, but presumably this, this in the long run saves the NHS. Oh yeah, within about two to three years, it will recuperate the cost of the machinery if you treat about 100 patients. And this is a, a new treatment which normally would have cost more money, but this is a thing that, that costs less money to the right. NHS and the taxpayer. Any woman recently diagnosed watching you right now is going to say, can I have it, and if I can, when? So Well, it is, I'm, I'm getting requests for this all the time, and we're trying to make sure it happens. What is going to facilitate after this guidance is that we should, trusts are going to have the positive go-ahead almost to get this and do it. Uh, because uh, even in these austerity times, it will actually save money to the people who pay the bill. Yeah. You're excited about this, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's waited for a long time. It started in 98, yeah. Well, many congratulations. Thank you. And wish Thank it well with, the, with all the work with it, Professor Jan Fajja. Thank you. Thank you very much. A new breast cancer treatment which replaces weeks of radiotherapy could be offered on the NHS in England. It uses a single dose of targeted treatment once a tumour has been removed in surgery. It could benefit up to 36,000 patients a year with early stage breast cancer and should also save the NHS money. As Sophie Hutchinson reports, for many patients it could replace up to 15 trips to the hospital for a course of radiotherapy. Marcel Bernstein, who's 71 and a writer, says she's never been busier. But almost exactly two years ago, she had surgery for breast cancer and at the same time was given a new version of radiotherapy. She says it was brilliant because it was over so quickly. I had no idea I'd had it done. I felt after the surgery, just as you do after any surgery, a bit woozy, I'd had a general anaesthetic, I felt tired for a few weeks. Absolute classic. But, but. It, I didn't know it had happened. If they hadn't told me they'd done it, I would never have known. There was no side effects. There was no, nothing to show. The treatment, which has been pioneered in the UK, involves a one-off dose of radiotherapy carried out during an operation in the minutes after any tumours have been removed. It's administered using a mobile radiotherapy machine and lasts around 20 minutes. The benefit of using this new device is that it directly targets an affected area from within the breast. It's also extremely fast, saving patients time and the NHS money. One estimate has put the savings for the NHS at £15 million a year.
The number of time that NHS spends in giving this treatment to a particular patient is a fraction of the time that would have otherwise been used. It is one hour in the operation theatre rather than 15 minutes to 20 minutes every day for three to six weeks. And breathe normally and relax. The new treatment has so far proved to be as effective as conventional radiotherapy. It's hoped that if plans to offer it on the NHS go ahead in the autumn, it will transform care for many breast cancer patients. Sophie Hutchinson, BBC News. Welcome back. Tens of thousands of breast cancer patients may be saved the pain and side effects of a course of radiotherapy by a new procedure performed just once during surgery. The NHS in England has been given the go-ahead to offer the new treatment to people with early-stage breast cancer. Harry Smith explains. Marcel Bernstein was diagnosed with breast cancer after a routine mammogram. The first surgeon recommended a double mastectomy plus a lengthy series of radiotherapy sessions. Then she was offered a new form of targeted radiotherapy. It's a totally different experience. I mean, you do it and it's, it's almost like, I mean, I felt I've had, had breast cancer for two months. I mean, which is nothing. I mean, it, it was not at any point unpleasant. Unlike traditional forms of radiotherapy, intrabeam is performed during surgery while the patient is still under anaesthetic. Once the tumour is removed, a probe is inserted into the breast and the radiation applied directly to where the tumour was. After 20 to 30 minutes of radiation, the probe is removed and the surgeon closes the incision. At present, there are just nine of these in the United Kingdom compared with 60 in Germany. One of the reasons is they cost around half a million pounds each. But what today's report says is that as well as transforming the lives of patients, they can save the NHS an enormous amount of time and money. One of the pioneers of the treatment of this country today welcomed the decision to give the National Health Service the go-ahead to use the new procedure. One patient said, I feel like a fraud because I've not, I don't feel I've had any treatment. Uh, otherwise I would be expecting to suffer as a cancer patient and that has not happened. Other patients have said, it's, I'm back to my normal life so quickly. Doctors stress that it is suitable only for patients who have their cancer diagnosed early. That could still benefit around 36,000 women in the UK. Harry Smith, ITV News. The former 